Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics. First, the highlights. Collation of governorship election results in Abia State to resume today as residents await announcements from Independent National Electoral Commission. Observer group tasked National Assembly to fast-track electoral offences bill. Bochi, Lagos State, police parade suspects in connection with violence during the elections. Thanks for joining us on the program. I'm Millicent Walker and here are the stories we are monitoring. According to the Independent National Electoral Commission in Abia State, collation of results will resume by 4 p.m. today. You would recall that INEG had directed the immediate suspension of collation of the governorship election result at Obingwa local government area until INEG commissioners arrive from Abuja uh, to supervise the collation and take a decision on what has to be done after reviewing the situation on ground. Ahead of the resumption today, the administrative secretary and returning officer is expected to address the press and channels television will bring you uh, the live events today at 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. In the meantime, a group called Progressives Abia Youth, designed to empower and equip youths to maximize opportunities for self and national development, are asking INEC to resist forces internally and externally and go ahead to declare conclusively the governorship election. They say Abia Youth would resist any attempt to declare an inconclusive election in the state. We congratulate the two House of Assembly members elect that emerged victorious and thank them for affirming the obvious fact that the election was well carried out in Obingwa. We, however, encourage them to be magnanimous in victory. In conclusion, having acknowledged the importance of technology in our electoral system, we call on INEC to fully utilize the BVAS, that is the Bermuda Voter Accreditation System and, trans and, and Transmission, in review of the Obingwa result. We call on INEC to reject every attempt to declare the Abia state election inconclusive or force a rerun, because this will further deepen the pain of voters who must have the courage to come out and vote after the abject outing of INEC at their state on February 25th, 2023. Any attempt to subvert the will of Abia people will lead to anarchy, and we don't want that. In every election, there will always be winners and learners. We therefore call on those who lost out in the election to learn from the experience, respect the will of Abia people, and appreciate INEC for a job well done in Abia State. The beauty of true democracy is displayed in the glamorous advance of public opinion translated into votes at the ballot box. Abia politicians, don't set our state on fire we will not leave you if you do that. We have no other place to call home but here. And we are the landlords of this state as the youth of Abia State. Above all things, the peace and progress of Abia should be your utmost priority as leaders to look up to, to guide and lead our state. Our correspondent in the southeast, Aitokwe Kuti, joins me now uh, for more from Umar here. Hi, Aitokwe. Give us a sense of the atmosphere in Abia today, following the fact that all eyes are still on INEC to make that final declaration on the winner of the March 18, 2023 governorship election in the state. Good afternoon, Millicent, and, and you're welcome to Umaya, the Abia State Capital. We're back here at the Collation Center here in Umaya, the Abia State Capital. It's peaceful this morning, but there is clear anxiety and palpable tension across the state as we await the commencement of the coalition, um, which according to INEC will commence by 4 p.m. today. And before um, 4 p.m., there's also there will be a 2 p.m 
press briefing by um, the administrative secretary and the, the, the returning officer, Professor Nena Oti. Uh, you could recall that on Monday, the returning officer um, suspended collation after a press statement issued by INEC to stop collation in Enugu and Abia states. There has been accusations and counter accusations by different political parties, but the security around here is very tight. Only people who have serious business at the INEC office are allowed to come in here because hundreds of security operators are stationed everywhere around the INEC office to forestall any breakdown of law and order. And Tokwe, there must be a lot of pressure for the returning officer uh, in Abia State. Speak to us about this um, result. You know, everyone is expecting from Obingwa local government area. What happened and why collation was suspended there? Okay, you could recall that um, we, we, on Monday they've already collated the returning officer had already collated six results from 16 out of the 17 local governments we have in Abia State, and the remaining one was just um, Obingwa. And there were alleged um, irregularities um, over voting, and um, a lot of irregularities um, at, at, the look, at, the, at the local government area, which is Obingwa. You could recall that also on the day of the coalition at Obingwa local government, um, there was um, thugs um, invaded the coalition center, tried to stop the coalition, and there were a lot of um, um, violence around that, and so I think that was one of the reasons why INEC had to suspend coalition from the area because um, political parties and agents are already contesting results from Obingwa local government. And um, it's the, the Obingwa before now has been has been the controversial local government um, at every election um, because of um, the population we have in Obingwa local government. So that was the reason why um, INEC had to issue a press statement stopping uh, coalition in Abia State and Enugu State. And we also know that, you know, INEC commissioners um, came in on, on Tuesday, you know, to also take a look at some of the results from there. Do we know if they will also be relying on results that are currently uploaded on IREV for that particular local government area? No, no, they didn't come from um, Abuja. Um, what I was told by um, the Public Affairs Department of INEC in Abia State was that they took the beavers machine and all the materials used at Obingwa local government for the election to Abuja, uh, um, well, maybe for forensic analysis or every other um, technology that could be used to really check the, the, the results from that area. Then... Um, the, the, the public affairs office also told me that now I think they are, they're coming back today by noon, then by 4 p.m. coalition will commence. And um, by roughly by 8, 9 p.m., Abians should know their next um, governor elect. Indeed, the, their fate. Um, Tokwe, let's talk about Enugu. I know two local government areas there were also, uh, coalition was suspended in Kano East, I believe, and in Suka. What do we know? Um, about that further. Yeah, similar scenario that happened in um, Enugu State where um, coalition was suspended um, from the INEC statement issued on Monday. And this was um, due to alleged irregularities of um, overvoting and bypass of the Beavers machine. Um, so on Monday, um, the suspended coalition, um, but as I was told before now that by 5 p.m. today, coalition will also commence at um, the, um, the coalition, state coalition center in Enugu State. But you know, um, before now we heard that um, both political parties, Labour Party and PDP, are already occupying the INEC office um, since for the past three days, waiting for the coalition to commence. So it's going to be an interesting time, and um, we'll be here to bring you details about it. And like I said, between now and 8 p.m., between 4 p.m. and 8 p.m., um, the people of Abia State and Enugu State will get to know their, uh, their governor elect. All right, many thanks. He took Bekute live for us there from the southeast. Uh, thank you very much for your reporting. We'll speak to you um, in the hours to come, talking about the latest in Abia State as to when collation will resume today and also in Ugu State.
We go over to other stories where the People's Democratic Party in Sokoto is alleging that four of its supporters and members have been killed since the announcement of the state's governorship and state assembly elections in the state. Addressing a press conference in Sokoto, the state's PDP chairman alleges intimidation of members of the party during the election through what he calls indiscriminate arrests and detention. Since the announcement of the result of the election, which purportedly gave legitimacy to unprecedented electoral fraud in the state, the much anticipated political violence which characterized the APC antecedents in the state has manifested in alarming proportion across all the 23 law governments in the state. We are indeed constrained to put a record the dastardly act of killing that occurred in some parts of the state. Three innocent citizens were killed in Shagari by close associates of leaders of the party in the state, that is the ABC. Killing of the son of a PDP stalwart supporter led Almiya of Mada into the other area of Sokoto. A businesswoman in Katami was purportedly robbed of her 300 bags of grants by hoodlums organized at that law government slamming. The list of those who suffered harassment, intimidation, and loss of property in different parts of the state are disturbingly alarming. Meanwhile, instead of arresting and arranging the perpetrators to face the justice, security is busy focusing attention on PDP supporters based on prompting by the APC leadership in the state. We are therefore using this medium to assure all PDP supporters in the state to be law-abiding citizens in the state. The New Nigeria People's Party and All Progressives Congress in Taraba State are protesting the declaration of the PDP governorship candidate Agbu Kefes as winner of the poll. The parties are alleging that the governorship election was characterized by irregularities, including overvoting. Meanwhile, the state governor has appealed to aggrieved parties to embrace peace and join the winner in moving the state forward. The declaration of Lieutenant Colonel Abu Kefas, retired of the PDP as governor-elect in Taraba State by the Independent National Electoral Commission, appears to be a thorn in the flesh of some political parties. Citing irregularities, some opponents of the All Progressives Congress and the New Nigeria People's Party say they are dissatisfied with the outcome and are therefore taking appropriate steps to seek redress in court. We have uh, identified places like Wukari, where 52 votes were allocated to uh, PDP, contrary to the Beavers report and even uh, the, the accreditation that was met. What they gave is entirely different from what is on ground. We are totally dissatisfied with about seven or eight local governments. And therefore, we are going to meet our lawyers who will now sit down, review the matter and then adequately advise us whether to go to the tribunal or not. We are going to challenge that result. We are going to challenge that result. We, we use the legal means until we reclaim our success, our victory. While the duo are protesting the outcome, the APC and SDP governorship candidates, Senator Emmanuel Bwacha and Dunladi Baido, have reached out to the winner to congratulate him via telephone. The Labour Party in a press statement says votes from its supporters made a lot of difference at the polls and their endorsement of the PDP candidate is not in vain, just as they asked him to fulfill the promises made to the electorate. We are assured that our vote made a lot of difference for left hand Colonel Kefas. To all our members of the CBBN in all the 168 wards and the 16 local government and two development areas, I deeply appreciate your efforts. You made it happen. However, the state governor, Darius Ishaku, is appealing to the aggrieved parties to embrace peace and join the winner in moving the state forward. First and foremost, I want to appeal to all Taramans 
We did the election peacefully. Announcement of results were achieved peacefully. I'll beg everybody in the name of God not to start any rank. Everything that was done was transparent. By this declaration of Abu Kefas as the governor-elect in the state, the PDP has now maintained its winning streak in Taraba since coming on board in 1999. So to come on the program, Lagos Police Parade Electoral Offenders. That's in a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back. Leadership of the National Assembly have been asked to look into the Electoral Offences Commission bill with a view to passing it into law so that electoral offence perpetrators can be prosecuted. This is the position of Intercontinental Leadership Initiative and the coalition of observer groups that monitor the just concluded governorship and House of Assembly elections. Addressing journalists in JAWS on post-election reports, the group observed that passage of such law will enhance prosecution of electoral offence perpetrators, while INEC and the judiciary should not delay in the prosecution of those already arrested for such offences. The report also condemned activities of desperate politicians who were engaged in the manipulation and undermining of the electoral process that led to violence in some parts of the country. The 10th National Assembly has a critical role to play on the amendment of the Electoral Act, particularly how we're able to provide a reform that unbundles INEC as an institution. And in unbundling INEC as an institution, first, how does the chairman of INEC emerge? How does the national commissioners emerge? And most importantly, how do resident electoral commissioners emerge and who exactly are they answerable to? For us to get it right, we must embody this institution and make her truly independent. And I think that as we reform the institution and provide reform on the Electoral Act, for every result that would be uploaded must have the signature of every party agent. If a result is uploaded and the party agents are not assented to it, it should be discarded. The critical elements in our electoral process are the world coalition and the local government coalition. This is where results are being manipulated. I think that we need to further look at how are we going to effectively collate results with little or no human interference. And again, this is where our security agencies uh, play a critical role. It is sad and unfortunate that our security agents are rather protecting political talks than the electorate. Oh, Eniola Cole is a convener, your Vote Matters project, and she joins me now from Abuja Studios for more. Um, hi, Eniola. What's your take on the outcome of the just concluded governorship election results, um, which we've seen across the country, different um, dynamics to the different parts and the different results which um, we are seeing? Hi, good afternoon. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's uh, been quite a ride from the presidential to the governorship elections. And uh, we saw some improvements, first of all, as uh, an elections observer group. Uh, we saw some improvements in the deployment of materials, uh, non-sensitive as well as, as sensitive materials. We saw earlier opening of polls by INEC. But then again, uh, there are some major areas that need improvement, and this translates even beyond our electoral law. The political will for democracy in Nigeria strongly needs to be addressed. Um, the role that political parties play um, strengthening of inter- and intra-party democracy also needs to strongly be addressed because what we've seen play out uh, most in the governorship election 
is that even when uh, the elections administration and management uh, works to an extent, the politicians are still there waiting to do do or die politics. We saw a lot of voter suppression. We saw a lot of violence in different states. We saw that um, a lot of uh, political contenders were not willing to accept the results if they were not the ones declared winner. And that is not the spirit of sportsmanship that they signed the peace accord for. So we call on uh, every relevant stakeholder, development partners who work in uh, the election space to ensure that there is more strengthening done for inter and inter intra party democracy, to ensure that um, political contenders are being able to be brought, are, are eligible to be brought to book, especially for signing things like peace accord treaties. There should be some level of enforcement. We're happy with the US uh, statement saying that they're going to impose visa bans. It should go even beyond that. We should see politicians being brought to book. We should see complicit security forces also being brought to book and being um, put in jail for uh, being complicit in the electoral uh, offenses that we saw perpetrated uh, nationwide. It's quite disheartening, to be honest, um, from the standpoint of civil society to see that all the work that we put in to see that we had a good electoral law, the 2022 Electoral Act as amended, uh, could not give us the dividends of democracy that we really hoped to see. So apart from that, on, this, on, on the side of INEC, we also want to see more strength, strengthening of the registration area and local government area uh, staffing as well as processes. We have seen that they would need to have their own vehicles and that's one of the recommendations we've made to them. They should be able to get at least one vehicle per uh, registration area, that's 8,809 vehicles, to ensure that uh, materials are conveyed from the registration area to the polling units level in good time and also retrieved in good time as well. And that would also reduce political infractions when it comes to distribution of materials. We also want to call on every relevant stakeholder, the registration area level and local government area level of INEC is where more strengthening needs to be done. And um, when it comes to political party agents, not all political parties have their agents down to every polling unit level. So insisting that uh, party agents must all sign the results may create more uh, disenfranchisement for results that did go through the right process, but then they didn't have all the party agents. So every party that's also coming out for election should also be strengthened to be able to have their own agents down at every polling unit across the country to ensure that um, their um, different interests are protected to ensure credibility of the electoral process and to also ensure reduced number of court cases that emanate out of uh, the elections. Some people might say that might be very difficult uh, talking about the court cases now because there are a flurry, uh, quite a, a lot of them uh, that we're seeing so far and those who are intending. But briefly, this is to get your thoughts on some of the states that are wrapping up that collation exercise. Uh, we understand today, Abia and Inugu. What's your advice? Uh, you know, and this is to ensuring that uh, this process is done and peacefully uh, concluded to all the stakeholders. Briefly, please. Okay, so we're, up, we're actually happy to see uh, the improvements in the electoral process that allow for INEC to review uh, from the BVAS and from the IREV and also to review um, the locations where there was violence and overvoting. It's an interesting dynamic to the electoral process. And we call on every stakeholder in Abia State and in Enugu State where election results would come out today to challenge through the right process. They should challenge through the judiciary go to the courts where they are aggrieved with the outcome of the results and ensure that peace is maintained. There is no need for any more violence and any more loss of life. Uh, whatever is declared, whoever comes out as uh, the winner, they should encourage and they should support uh, the process and challenge the right way through the courts. But say no to any more violence in the Southeast. And you're like Cole as a convener, you both Matters Project. We appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well, the governor of River State, yes, and Weke, has been commenting on a lot of things, one of which is the requirement of winning the presidential election. He says to be president of Nigeria, you need a spread in the voting pattern 
of Nigeria. And speaking today in a media chat from Port Harcourt, he explains that the South South, North Central, Lagos and the North East are key for any candidate uh, aspiring to win the presidential election. He also says that the Integrity Group agreed to vote a Southern president, but not a particular candidate. Well, this will be his first media chat after the 2023 general elections. The Integrity Group met and said they are all for Southern presidents, but not for a Northern president again. That power has to shift, and that we should align with what the APC governor said. So there was never a time we said it must be O, it must be this. It's not correct. However, we said strategies that must make a Southern president to emerge. And that strategy was carried out, and the result was achieved. So, if anybody tells you that this and that, that's the best. In terms of, after all, the same Buana, he said, I said we met with him, and we agreed on something, sharing of this and that, and that. So, they, they, they are tired to say what they want to say. They are tired to say what they want, what they want to say. No, not like that. I, 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 uh, I will not be here to disclose in details, and that will be setting out I mean, my, 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 my colleagues. Okay. But the point is that we agreed for so, Southern president. There are those who strongly believe that you swung that election in the favor of the candidate of the APC, now president-elect. And I'll give you two examples. Uh, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, said this in a recent interview, saying, in Rivers, the governor came out against me. If the real votes of Rivers were counted, I won over 50% of the votes. Uh, a former e economist and a prominent son of River State, Mr. Tedo Peterside, says that evidence shows that uh, Labour Party results were swapped for APC in some cases. And, I mean, lots of other reports like that. So what do you say to those who strongly believe well, yeah, that you fine. rigged that election in, in favour of uh, APC? The, the word rig is unfortunate for anybody to use the word rig. I don't work for ANIC. I don't have any documents with me. I'm not an ad hoc staff of ANIC. And so I'm not in a place to reach election for anybody. It's when you have the materials of INEC that you cannot talk about rigging. But I take exception to Peter B's comment that I came out against him. People are not being sincere. People are not being, uh, 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 you know, people are not appreciative. In 2019, asked Peter B. I was one of the team that chose P2B to be, to be the vice presidential candidate of Elijah Tugambaga. When we met in Elijah Tugambaga uh, the house, he said, these are the names. I will choose P2B. P2B was invited when we were in uh, Saraki's house in the night. I was fought by people like Ipoimadu, my old friend, the governor of uh, Ebo State, people like uh, Pyrocyne. Every blame was on why would I be the one that would say P2B should, why should I choose for the service? Did he come out to say the uh, governor Wiki was the one who supported me to be the vice presidential candidate? He didn't say so. You can catch more of that interview on our YouTube channel, forward slash channels web. And finally, the Lagos State Police Command says about 36 electoral offenders were arrested in the state and they just concluded presidential and governorship elections that took place 25th of February and 18th of March 2023. Speaking with journalists over the arrests and exhibits recovered, the police public relations officer in Lagos, Benjamin Hondain, explained that after screening the suspects, 11 of them were found culpable. He adds that those with offences under the INEC purview have been handed over while the police will prosecute the others. We well, have been served on Lunchtime Politics. Thank you for watching. I'm Melissa Antwoka. Bye for now.